Welcome, welcome, welcome. On today's episode, we have a very special brew for you. This is something that I've wanted to try for a long time, and it all started with a conversation with a friend. I was having a conversation with him about all the different types of hopping methods. And then he asked me, had anyone ever done all those different hopping methods in one beer? I couldn't think of any commercial examples that used all the different hopping methods, so I figured let's give it a try because I'd be interested to find out how it would turn out. This conversation was a couple of years ago and we finally got around to making it. So for this beer, we basically hopped it every plausible way that we could think of without spending a bunch of money on new equipment. All said and done, there's about 10 different hopping methods included in this beer. We got mash hops, first wart hops, early boil hops, mid boil hops, late edition boil hops, whirlpool hops, hop back hops, well, kind of, more on that later. Dry hop during active fermentation. Dry hop after fermentation. Hop tea at kegging. Bittering hops. Aroma hops. Not only did we use all these different hopping methods, we also used a bunch of different types of hop products. We used whole cone hops, T90 pellet hops, hop extract, Lubomax hops, also known as cryo hops. And of course, there's only really one style of beer that comes to mind that would suit all these hops, and that is the double IPA. So let's get started on this hopstacle course. Roll the intro. A link to the recipe for this monstrosity can be found in the description down below. While you're busy clicking around, also check out Hopeful Brewing on Instagram and Twitter. You'll find content not included on YouTube like our hop growing progress. If you get value out of this video, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Your support is appreciated. The intent for this beer is classic West Coast IPA. One of the first IPAs that I fell in love with was Green Flash's West Coast IPA with this Simcoe, Centennial, and Columbus hops. Some of that inspiration shines through to this beer, but some unintended things happen that makes this more like a West Coast IPA meets New England IPA. More on that later. Okay, let's check out the recipe. Target water profile for this is 100 calcium, 15 magnesium, 10 sodium, 50 chloride, 170 sulfate, and 50 bicarbonate. Here are our water additions to reach this target profile. 4 grams of calcium chloride, 5 grams of Epsom salt, 8 grams of gypsum. Our strike water was 5.25 gallons at 164 degrees Fahrenheit. For the fermentables for this one, I wanted a grain bill that had a little bit more flavor that could stand up to all these hops but still let the hops shine through. So here's what I came up with. Nine pounds of pale two row as our base malt. Four pounds of red X to provide a little bit more rich multi munich like complexity. Half a pound of Kara Munich and half a pound of Kara Pills and two pounds of dextrose added to the boil to bump up the ABV. It looks like some crystal malt may have snuck in there. Sorry, Peter. And we have arrived at our first hop addition at seven grams of Centennial whole cone hops to the mash. mash in at 152 degrees Fahrenheit and we held that temperature for an hour.
we set up our recirculation with our RIMS tube, and then we took a pH reading. Our pH reading was right on at 5.4, so no changes were necessary. Our second hop addition is five grams of CTZ and five grams of Simcoe as a first wart addition. We then heated up the mash to 168 degrees Fahrenheit and sparged with 4.54 gallons of water. We collected about eight gallons into the kettle and we started our 90 minute boil. Our third hop addition was at 60 minutes and it's one milliliter of CTZ hop extract. This should add about 10 IBUs to the beer. We added two pounds of dextrose to the boil at 30 minutes in order to bump up the ABV to about 9% without adding the sweetness associated with malt. Also at the 30 minute mark, we added seven grams of Centennial whole cone hops and seven grams of both CTZ and Simcoe pellets. At the 10 minute mark, we added our yeast nutrient and our world flock tablet. Also at 10 minutes, we added 14 grams of each Simcoe and CTZ pellets and 14 grams of Centennial whole cone hops. Top edition number six consisted of one ounce of Centennial Cone Hops, one ounce of CTZ, and one ounce of Simcoe, all in the Whirlpool at 165 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Top edition number seven is where things went a little south. This is the Hopback Hops. This is something that I've never tried before, and what I attempted to do was convert my rims tube into a hot back by pulling out the heating element and adding a blank to the one side. I filled a muslin bag with a half ounce of centennial cone and jammed it into the tube and fired it up. No dice, we were barely getting any flow and I didn't want to stress out the pump. I tried reversing the flow and it still didn't work, so I'm gonna have to call this one a failure. So we just added the hops to the whirlpool I think with a little bit more finessing, this could potentially work. We cooled our wort down to seven degrees Fahrenheit, but we only collected about 4.25 gallons. Our gravity was 1096, so it looks like we had more boil off and hop absorption than expected. I added one gallon of water and we took a gravity reading of 1078, so only about five points lower than expected. We then aerated our wort we then pitched our yeast. I decided to use Imperial Dry Hop A24, which should be a great yeast to showcase this massive amounts of hops that we added to this beer. We suspended our dry hop of one ounce of Centennial and one ounce of Mosaic Lupo Max in the fermenter with magnets, but disaster struck. Hops were supposed to be added toward the end of fermentation, but we woke up the next day and they were in the beer. I guess we're gonna get some biotransformation on this. Oh well, this is probably gonna cause the beer to be a little bit more fruity than intended, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see how it turns out. Once fermentation slowed down on the fourth day, 
I open the fermenter and add our next dry hop of one ounce of Centennial Cone and one ounce of Mosaic Lupomax. And we were also able to pull out our previous dry hop at the same time. We purged the keg and then we waited. The gravity kept dropping and dropping. It got all the way down to 1005 on my tilt hydrometer, but I know that under pressure that's about four or five points off. So it ended up being about 1010, which is still lower than our target of 1018. Oh well, more alcohol. This brings us to our last hop addition, hop tea. For this one, we use one ounce of Simcoe and Mosaic. And one liter of water at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. We let this cool down gradually to room temperature, which took a few hours. We then added it to the keg and purged it with CO2 and we kegged on top of it. Today, we're finishing up our video on Hopsicle course by tasting it. So let's get started. Here it is. Cheers. Cheers. We're gonna taste it. So what do you think? First off, it smells delicious okay. and Got a lot of, a lot of smells going on in there. I think it smells very like immediately comes to mind like fruity pebbles. Like a, it has very strong aroma. And remember, this is the beer that we hopped pretty much every way we could think of. So fruity too. Strong aroma. There's a decently a uh, decent reddish hue to it. We've used about uh, I think four pounds of red X in this, so it should give us a pretty good uh, color. And it's kind of hazy, which was not the intent, but we did not gelatin fine this or anything like that. But the hops did fall in during active fermentation, so I'm sure we got bio transformation, and you know it made the beer a little bit hazier than intended. So kind of like New England IPA meets uh, West Coast IPA. But I'm not really getting any of the big West Coast IPA typical tones that you get. No. Not getting a whole lot of pine or I am, I am getting the citrus, so there's definitely some citrusiness to it. Kind of uh, the citrus is kind of like the bitter that lingers on your tongue mm -hmm. afterwards. But I'm not getting um, I'm getting a little bit of dankness, but not not a whole lot. I think a lot of those flavors kind of bio transformed, which kind of leads me to the idea that you don't need to use these really expensive, super fruity hops in order to create these fruitier flavors. It's not like a giant fruit bomb, like maybe some of the other, um, you know, galaxy or something like that, but it's definitely a little bit fruity. And most of this was achieved from um, Centennial and Simcoe, which is a little bit fruity, obviously. And then the Mosaic too. Um, Columbus was the other hop in this, but uh, 
you know, I'm surprised that we have this much fruity considering we've got a couple of those sea hops in here. So what do you think? I love it. I mean, I'm that person that really does enjoy the, the hazy IPA. So to me, this kind of falls closer to that. So that's, I mean, that's why I love it. Um, but yeah, it's just really, it's, it's got a nice taste to it. Fruity, like you mentioned. Um, and it lingers just a little bit there on my tongue, but I think it's real good. What's interesting about it is it looks like a hazy IPA, but the mouthfeel does not feel like a hazy IPA whatsoever. It's not creamy and juicy whatsoever. If anything, it's leaning on the dry side. And I think that's because the beer really dried out a lot. Um, we used two pounds of dextrose in there to up the ABV, which by the way is uh, a little bit over 9% on this, and it definitely doesn't taste, it doesn't drink like a 9% beer. There's no. no alcohol taste, any fusel alcohol flavors whatsoever in it. So um, that's kind of, Awesome. I think some of that has to do with uh, fermenting under pressure and it might suppress some of those fusel alcohol flavors. Uh, but it's finished pretty dry, I think around 1010, which is about eight points lower. So, another thing that doesn't seem like the typical West Coast IPA that's, you know, very sticky, resinous, not really getting that. This is pretty dry, pretty fruity. Yeah. What do you think? I think it's great. Um, but yeah, I think you can't tell the percentage of alcohol that it is it's almost like we're gonna have to make that a real real big on our little label here at home uh for our friends who are going to enjoy it yeah this isn't one you're going to want to <laughs> slam three or four down in the night you're probably going to wake up and have a bad uh, morning if that's the case so you know i'm uh, not angry about it finishing at nine percent do i think it's necessary to hop all these different ways in order to achieve this flavor probably not but we know if we we do that it'll still turn out to be pretty good. It was probably a lot of extra work, you know. Um, you don't really need to do mash hops and, um, you know, first wort hops and early boil hops, late mid, but you could do a mix of these and probably achieve a very similar beer. And accidents happen. I think this beer would have been drastically different if the hops didn't fall in on the first day of fermentation. I think it would have been a much more uh, dank and resiny, piney beer, but hey, I'm not too upset with how it turned out. And, um, you know, I'll make something similar to this again in the future. I don't think it's bad to use these typical West Coast hops and let them uh, do some biotransformation. So if you like those fruitier flavors and you don't like, um, by the way, you're, you're not getting a ton of, for how much hops we use, mm -hmm. there's not a ton of lingering bitterness in this. It's, no. like, it's like very drinkable, even though the IBU calculator says it's like over 100 IBUs. And I think some of that has to do with, um, you know, the hops going in early and doing the biotransformation. I'm not sure what else um, might have caused that, but hey, I like the result. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you've ever done an experiment like this and all the different ways you hop, I'd love to hear about it. And then I also like to let you guys in on the next plan brew. What I want to do is have you guys help me select the next brew. So I have a few different ideas of what I want to brew. You guys can vote on it, put it in the comments down below. I might put a poll on Instagram or on Twitter and chime in and, you know, I'll make whatever the consensus is. So a couple of the ideas I have is a lemon floral saison with some like uh, laurel and sriracha ace hops, possibly a tropical stout, coffee milkshake IPA, and I got some other stuff in the plant in, in the plants. I'll take into consideration any write-in votes you might have. What's your vote? Um, you said the tropical stout, right? I think that's something that I'm I'm interested in. Tropical stout, something we've never made before. Sounds delicious. The weather's getting warmer. They usually drink these beers, and it's very popular in like Jamaica. So maybe that will be the next one. You decide. Come join us next time. Like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Your support is appreciated.